Our next presenter is Elie Demont Le Cremier, Le Cremier. Le Cremier. from France, and he'll be talking about bioanalytics. Yeah. Thank you. So good, good evening, everybody. And so I, I will not talk here about competition between um, bioelectrical systems and anaerobic digestion, but more like cooperation. And so uh, I am Elie Desmond Le Cremier from uh, uh, I am working in ERCI in France, so our lab is in Antony, close to Paris, and um, uh, our team is, well, is a biomic team, I am a postdoc there, and we are working, uh, the main subject of the team is um, anaerobic processes for waste treatment, so here we'll present a few results, we have about combination of a bio and biocathode uh, in a bioelectrochemical system for microbial electrosynthesis. And I will show you how it, how it can increase energy efficiency for microbial electrosynthesis. So most of the uh, current system used for microbial electrosynthesis are like that, uh, with um, biological cathodes um, reducing CO2 to organic compounds and an abiotic anode uh, um, oxidizing water and producing oxygen. And this kind of system has typically a voltage of 1.5 volt. And this is quite high when we try to evaluate the economical uh, feasibility of the technology. For example, in this analysis, uh, the authors show that uh, energy cost appears to be the major cost for microbial electrosynthesis. So it would be nice if we can reduce the um, energy cost in, uh, in this, for this system. Um, and so if we... Oh, not working, yeah. Um, if we look at the redox potential, so the 1.5 volt uh, that we that is was used for the for the cell is in accordance with the theoretical potential between, for example, uh, water and oxygen and acetate and bi bicarbonate. But if you want to re to reduce uh, the the voltage of the cell, one way one easy way would be to use different uh, electron donor as the anode. So why not using uh, organic molecules as the anode? So we know that we have um, bioanodes that are working fairly well with organic molecules, and we have uh, lots of organic um, molecules available in waste. So this was the idea of the BioR project. Um, so this is a project in collaboration with different labs in France, uh, LB Lab in uh, Narbonne, uh, LGC Lab in Toulouse, Suez Environment as an industrial partner, and another ERCI lab in, in Rennes. So the idea of the project is to use organic waste at the anode to make micro uh, to uh, to use the energy from the waste to reduce the cost for the electrosynthesis, and it also provides interesting other advantages in comparison with other bioreferring process for waste, because for example we have a membrane separating the compartment with the waste from the compartment where occurs the synthesis, so there is a physical separation between. Uh, waste and uh, the chemical pro compound produced, and also it offers interesting oppor opportunities um, by interfacing microbial uh, communities with electrical circuits. So this was the idea, and we use this kind of setup. So uh, uh, each cell with um, a cation, cation exchange membrane separating the two compartments. Uh, we use a saturated caramel electrode. Here it's, it is shown in the cathodic compartment, but um, we use the, we try different um, settings. I will talk about it later. Uh, we have a carbon plus anode uh, with a 16 centimeter square uh, um, surface. And uh, it was inoculated uh, with a precultivated anode that allows a very fast uh, increase of current. Uh, the cathode is a stainless steel. And the medium at the anode was a uh, minimal medium. And uh, in this particular experiment, we use acetate uh, to feed the anode, but then we, we are now uh, working with real waste. And in the cathode, the medium was the same, uh, but it was inoculated with homoacetogenic culture. In fact, mixed culture enriched for homoacetogens. Um, so uh, when we have this kind of system, then uh, we wanted to to, to begin the electrosynthesis, so we have to ref, to reflect about, about the to to think about the strategy um, how how we we conduct the system. So we first try to polarize the cathode, and this works. We produce organic molecules at the cathode, but then um, 
the, the current raise very b b rapidly and the, the, anode, uh, the potential of the anode rise very rapidly and so the biofilm is oxidized because we produce oxygen at the anode, so it was not a good strategy. Then we thought about polarizing the anode, so this works for, um, for the degradation of waste at the anode, and we produce like high current densities up to uh, 30 amps per square meter. But then um, we had very unsteady current density, as you can see, it depends on the substrate concentration, mixing velocities, and other parameters. And in fact, the cathodes was not able to cope with the rate of the anode because um, with high current density, we were mainly producing hydrogen at the cathode. So it was not efficient for um, organic molecules production. So we, were th we think about a more sophisticated strategy for operating this kind of system. And so we opted for first anode pol polarization that allows to to the biofilm at the anode to grow. And when we reach um, a threshold uh, current, we then fix the current. It allows to control the flow of electrons at the cathodes. And then and you can see that uh, when we fix the current, the, the potential of the anode dro drop. And this is very interesting because it diminished the voltage of the cell. And then uh, when the acetate is consumed, the potential of the anode rise and then we go back to the polarizing the anode because um, is, so we don't have oxid oxidation of the biofilm. And then with this strategy, we were able to conduct the experiments. So uh, for the result I present here, this was um, three inoculated reactors uh, with one control experiment without inoculation of the cathodes. So here the anodes were fed with acetate and we, we were measuring um, electrical and chemical parameters in the in the in the in the both compartment during the experiment. So a first phase um, lasted like 15 days until complete uh, acetate exhaustion. And at the end of the first this first phase, we sampled the biofilm at the at one of the cathodes. So we stopped one of the reactor. We sampled the biofilm for microbial for microbial analysis, and we were not completely happy because at the, at that point we were mainly producing methane. So um, we wanted to have uh, soluble organic molecules. So we launched a second phase with um, two bromoethane sulfonate uh, introduced in the cathodes. So to, we wanted to inhib inhibit the methanogenesis. And so we, had this, we again uh, inoculated uh, subacetate at the anode to have current production. And we had a second phase, like 15 days again. And uh, at the end of this second phase, we sampled the biofilm uh, at the cathode and at the anode. And uh, that's it. And here are the results uh, for the chemical production uh, during the, the both phase. So you have the accumulated um, millimole of electron produced in the different compounds as a function of time. And you have in, um, in blue the hydrogen, green is the methane, and purple is the volatile fatty acids. You can see that in the first phase for 15 days, we have almost only methane. And second phase, when methane is inhibited, we have volatile fatty acids. Um, uh, the red curve is the other electron measured in the circuit. And here is the real electron balance uh, only for second phase. So you can see that we obtain around 50% coulombic efficiency for producing uh, VF uh, volatile fatty acids, mainly um, acetate and format in this case. And the production of formate, uh, the max rate of acetate production was 11 gram per square meter and per day, so quite interesting rate. Um, we also looked for uh, at the electrode to see what was there. So here are some images um, of the anode, of carbon close at the anode, but I won't talk about it here. If you want to have more information, please come and see our poster. It's 2.25 tomorrow. And at the cathode, it was fairly interesting because we used stainless steel, stainless steel cathodes and we, were, we, we didn't uh, know what, to, what we could obtain. And we observed that there was a biofilm formed on the, on the electrode um, uh, uh, before BS addition and after BS addition. We had a very thin biofilm, but still a biofilm. And then we tried to sequence uh, the ribotags for these um, biofilms and we obtain these results. So um, at, the, at the 
in the first phase before BES addition, in the end of the phase, uh, we, we observe that we have met mainly metanomicrobiase on the, on the stainless, stainless steel cathode. So this is very logical because we have me methane production, so it was congruent with the chemical results. And after BS addition and methanogenesis inhibition, we, we have um, ma mainly clostridiase on the electrode. It was also very logical because we know that in this family, this, this bacterial family, there are lots of homoacetogens, so that's what we wanted and it was congruent with acetate and formate production. Uh, we can still see that we have s uh, some methanogens left and it was um, strange because we didn't have uh, any methane production in the end, so they s probably they do something, something different than methane as, at, at the moment. Um, and then, so we have then uh, quite a nice uh, system uh, producing uh, volatile fatty acids and degrading waste, but wh but, uh, what about the energy efficiency. Uh, so um, to evaluate the gain using a bioanode emissi in comparison with a classical platinum anode emissi, we implemented the second system and uh, we measured the, the different intensity obtained in function of the voltage we can apply on both electrodes, on the both, on both the cell cells. And so we obtained this kind of graph. Um, so this is um, current densities as a function of the power input. And so we were quite happy because you can see that the, the green curve for the bio anode is above the blue curve for the platinum anode. And uh, this is again, this, this is logical because if our uh, electrode bio anode is uh, working at minus 0.4 volt, whereas the uh, uh, platinum anode is, work, is working at plus one volt, is, then we have a huge uh, gain in voltage for the cell. And so, for example, if you look at 10 amps per square meter for the platinum uh, anode MEC, uh, we have like something like 50 watts. Uh, whereas for our bioanode MEC, we have like 15 watts. So this is like, um, we have divided by 3.2 the input, uh, power input needed for the system. And if we look at other different, other point like at 20 ohms per square meter of, of five, it's, it, it range from 3.5 to 2.5 um, um, uh, uh, ratio. And so we, we, if we go up in the current, the ratio is less, but we, we can, we have still like more than factor two uh, in gain uh, for the, uh, in power input. Um, and uh, also I, I wanted to say that here the power input are quite high because in fact the voltage needed for these cells are very, very high because of the H cell system. But um, the next step for us is to go for uh, like a 10 liter uh, a reactor with very close electrodes and probably will will have more realistic uh, voltage here. Um, uh, so um, I go to the conclusion, I think, yes. So we have, um, uh, nice system uh, we, which is working, coupling a bionet and biocathodes, and it's allow energy efficiency increase by 2.5 to 3.5. So this is very interesting. And if we go back to the costs that were, that we, that were evaluated, you remember that here the electricity cost was like two thirds of the total cost of the, of the system. So in fact, if we uh, increase the energy efficiency by 2.5 to 3.5, the costs are divi divided by 1.7 to 2. So this can change lots of things, lots of things in, in, if we think about the industrial, industrialization of the process. And also the context is very different here because we are in the context of uh, waste treatment. So in fact, the molecules that we produce here come in addition to the waste treatment. So um, it's uh, just bonus because we already have some money for waste treatment. And that's it. To have this uh, this uh, bioanode working with the biocathode, we we, are, we had to develop uh, conducting strategies. So I talked here about the switch in electrical uh, conduction uh, in electrical uh, system, but uh, we also tried other strategies like um, um, regulating the immersed surface of the different electrodes to 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 change the. Uh, uh, current densities on the electrode. Um, so all these uh, strategies are 
um, published in a patent. Um, that is, is we have the number here. And that's it. I would like to thank my team, Biomic team in Erste Anthony. Uh, here is Theodore Boucher, the leader of the team, also leader of the BioR project. And also Anna Bridi is working on the same project. I also used here some result of Yu Zhaoqi. She's not in the picture, but she's doing an internship in our lab. And uh, here are the different um, partner in the, pro in, in the project. And uh, I didn't talk here a lot about, about the anodes. We have very high efficient anodes. And please don't come and see our poster to have a lot uh, more talk about the anodes. Um, we are currently working with anodes decoding waste in a continuous mode. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for this um, presentation. I'm Silvia Hilleman from Ghent University. I was wondering how much of the acetate that you produce at your biocathode, how much of that acetate you lose over your cation exchange membrane and is then oxidized by the anodic biofilm? Um, well, we don't know exactly uh, how much uh, acetate produced at the cathode uh, goes through the membrane. We were supposing that uh, it was uh, trapped in the cathodic compartment, but we know that it's not really in the case. But we still um, reach like one, one gram acetate in the compartment. It depends, in fact, of the length of the experiment. So we, we didn't uh, try to optimize this uh, part yet, but we, yeah, this is a question we have to try to trap our uh, molecule production at the cathode, so yeah, we don't know exactly. Um, have you done any LSVs on your cathode? I just find it rather uh, remarkable that your bioanode is using less, has less over potential than a platinized cathode. Um, can you repeat, please, the question? Have you done linear sweep voltammograms, uh -huh. LSVs of the cathode? No, we didn't do that because uh, no, I'm not used to this kind of uh, characterization. Well, it, it, it's rather remarkable that your over potential would be lower than platinum. I mean, at the platinum's pretty hard to beat. At the cathode? You yeah. You mean? Yeah. Um, you're saying you're doing two to three times less um, over potential because that's how much you've reduced the power. Uh, at the anode, but not at the cathode, because at the cathode we have stainless steel, and so the, the potential of the cathode is very low. But uh, the gain is from the anode because the anode it works at minus 0.4 volt so instead of. Explain why. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. So you think your process is limited by the anode or cathode? What's the current density of your cathode? Um, here I limited the current density to five ohms per square meter. But um, we also tried with 10 ohms per square meter, and it worked. In fact, the, the anode can reach higher current than the cathode. The cathode is still limiting the system in, the, in our system. Yeah. OK, thank you for the presentation. I just uh, have uh, one question. Uh, during your uh, one month experiment in your <coughs> slide, the around 35 uh, days experiment, how was, I just curious, how was the pH in your yeah. ca cancer chamber? In this experiment, we didn't regulate it, the pH, so in the end, it was very high, like nine or, or between nine and 10, so it was uh, yeah, very high. But now we are using other strategies to regulate the pH, both at the anode and the cathode, because we want to have long-term experiment. Uh, but at that time, yeah, no. At the end, in the end, the, ca the pH was very high. In the so when your uh, when your cathode at high pH conditions, your acetate is still produced at a very high rate. Yes, it, not very high rate, but it was like the 10 gram per acetate, acetate per square meter and per day. But uh, um, when looking at the microbial analysis, in fact, the Clostridia C we found are alkalophilic. So um, yeah, they are adapted to these conditions. Okay, thank you. Maybe a final question? Thank you. <coughs> Congrats uh, for, the, um, for the talk. There is a, a very interesting result just in this, in this uh, slide, and I would like to know your opinion. When you get rid of the methanogens, adding the BES, I just noticed that you also get rid of the geobacter. 
are they friends and they go together or uh, yes i yeah we were not sure about why why we had Joe back there in, in first time at the um, uh, at the Katat before BS edition uh, because most of the time we don't uh, find Joe back there when uh, when we are lot we obtain a lot of very often we obtain methano electromethanogenesis methanogenesis and we don't see any Joe back there so this time we saw some Joe back there but maybe um, there was a problem with the membrane and they come from the anode or something I, i'm not sure why we have this geobacter and we don't find them after that but in other experiments we usually we don't find them so okay yeah. because i mean re regardless of the where they coming from uh since it has been published that geobacter is able to transfer electrons yeah. to methanogens to produce methane yeah so maybe it's May yeah, maybe yeah. Yeah. i don't know i would looks like a very interesting thing yeah to look at i don't know <laughs> so let's thank ellie